The graph data structure has a great many applications in computer science, almost invariably to model some type of network. Travel routes, such as road links, shipping lanes, or aircraft flight paths can be represented, including information about distances, speed limits, wind speed, fuel requirements, or just about anything of relevance. But it doesn't stop there. A search engine might model the links between web pages on the internet using a graph. The routing of data packets during transmission on a computer network can be represented by a graph. The connections between people and groups in social networks. The speed and pressure of liquids flowing inside pipes. Finding the quickest time to complete a project that includes several interdependent steps, for example in the field of construction. Modelling objects in three dimensions usually involves the creation of a mesh, which is really just another type of graph. The available moves in a strategy game such as chess, or the possible scenarios in a computer-generated simulation. Arguably, the graph is one of the most versatile data structures in the field of software engineering. Here's a simple graph. It's a collection of interconnected nodes, but unlike a tree, there are no rules about how these nodes can be connected. There's no such thing as a root node, nor are there such things as parent nodes or child nodes. In a graph, a node is more correctly known as a vertex. And vertices are connected by edges. Typically, a graph will have more edges than vertices. A graph with lots of edges in relation to the number of vertices is said to be a dense graph while a graph with few edges in relation to the number of vertices is said to be sparse. In some graphs, the edges are directional. This is known as a directed graph. It's also known as a digraph. A graph in which all of the edges are bidirectional is known as an undirected graph, or an unordered graph, or simply a graph. By default, a graph is assumed to be unordered. Each edge in a graph can have a weight associated with it. The weight of each edge is sometimes referred to as the cost. What each cost represents depends, of course, on the application. For example, each cost could be a speed limit, the diameter of a water pipe, the number of hours to complete a phase of a project, you name it. A path is a sequence of vertices in a graph. A graph is said to be connected if there is a path from every vertex to every other vertex. A cycle is a path in which the starting vertex is also the ending vertex. A tree is a special type of graph which includes a path from some starting node, the root, to every other node, but a tree has no cycles. So how do we represent a graph? Well, to begin with, a graph can be described in mathematical set notation. A graph is said to be a set of vertices, V, and a set of edges, E. We can list the vertices inside curly brackets, and each edge can be listed as a pair of vertices. For a weighted graph, we can add the cost of each edge to this notation. Now remember, an undirected graph is one in which all of the edges are bidirectional. So strictly speaking, we should denote each possible direction of an edge separately. So what if we want to code up a graph and work with the data it contains? There are two ways that a graph class could internally maintain the vertices and edges of a graph. These are the adjacency list and the adjacency matrix. In essence, with an adjacency list system, we have a master list of vertices. Then, for each edge, each starting vertex maintains a list of ending vertices. Or to put it another way, each vertex maintains a list of its neighbours. There are several ways this could be implemented, but an object-oriented approach is probably the most suitable. 
we could code up a vertex class that each vertex object would be instantiated from. The vertex class would have a property to hold information about the vertex, such as the name of a city if we were representing some kind of map. Another property could be an identifier for the vertex, and another an array containing the identifiers of its adjacent vertices. The master list of vertex objects could also be stored in a simple one-dimensional array. To represent a weighted graph, the cost of each edge could be stored in the adjacency list too. Using an adjacency list is a very compact, space-efficient representation of a graph, particularly a sparse graph. You don't have to store any more data than necessary. However, determining if an edge exists between two particular vertices would require searching through the adjacency list of one of them. For a dense graph, the time taken will increase proportionately with the density of the graph. With an adjacency matrix, every vertex is written as a row heading and a column heading in a grid. If an edge exists between a pair of vertices, then its weight can be indicated at the intersection of the appropriate row and column. Note that for an undirected graph, there is symmetry along the adjacency matrix's diagonal. If there's an edge from A to B, there must be a corresponding edge from B to A. This symmetry wouldn't be present for a directed graph. For an unweighted graph, we can simply represent each edge with a Boolean value. An adjacency matrix can be implemented with a two-dimensional array. We would still have a vertex class from which we would create each vertex object, but the actual connectivity of the graph would be defined by this 2D array of edges. One of the advantages of an adjacency matrix over an adjacency list is that determining whether or not an edge exists between two vertices requires a simple array lookup. This takes the same amount of time to do regardless of the edge in question. However, an adjacency matrix is not particularly efficient when it comes to space. For a sparse graph, much of the adjacency matrix will be empty. Furthermore, for an undirected graph, half of the information stored is just duplication. Which method you use to implement a graph will ultimately depend on the nature of the information it will represent, and of course, how you plan to process it.